Hello, there are so many YouTube videos and investing strategies talking about dividend investing, but there's a huge difference between a good and a bad dividend policy. In today's episode, we want to go over that only. Let's get started. So let's start by talking about what dividends are and what is a dividend yield. When a company has extra cash, they can do five things with it. Invest in their growth, make acquisitions, buy back its own shares, pay out dividends and pay down its debts. Dividends and share buybacks are devices to return the money back to its shareholders. A dividend is typically a fixed amount that you get regardless of its share price. Dividend yield is basically a percentage of the share price that we are getting as dividend. For example, if the dividend yield is 4% and the stock price is $100, we will get $4 of dividend from the company. Now, if the company's share price falls to $50, the dividend yield will be 8%, which also means we are getting $4 as dividend. What? Simply put, the dividend yield will rise if the stock price falls and vice versa. Now let's talk about why dividends are not good for a lot of investors. The first point is dividends are very tax inefficient. When the company gives out dividends, it has to pay corporate taxes on it. And then when you get the dividend as a stakeholder, you have to declare it as income and then pay taxes again on it. The company in place of paying a dividend could have invested in its future growth, could have reduced its debt or made acquisitions. In terms of not paying dividends, we don't pay dividends because we think we can turn every dollar we retain into more than a dollar of market value. I mean, the only reason for us to keep your money is if it becomes worth more by us keeping it than it would be worth if we gave it to you. And if we can create more than a dollar of market value for every dollar we keep, uh, you're better off whether you want to take that dollar out by selling a little piece of your stock or whether you continue to leave it in. That's the test. A second very common reason why dividends are not good is uncovered dividends. What it means is essentially once the dividends are being paid out, the management does not want to slash it because it could be perceived as being unstable. If we look at at and as an example, when they slashed their dividends into half in February 2022, the stock prices fell down by 6%. In such instances, management would want to continue giving out dividends so that their company stock prices are not affected. Let's look at ExxonMobil as a stock. When you look at the cash flow, sometimes it's in the positive, sometimes it's in the negative. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be sh- but if you look at the dividends they have paid out to the shareholders, it has remained fairly constant. The management is basically taking on debt to pay dividends. They're not taking on debt to grow their business because they're afraid if they don't pay off the pay the dividends, the stock price might fall, which which is troubling. If you've been liking the video till now, please don't forget to hit the like button. So when does it make sense for a business to pay out dividends? Because obviously there are businesses who are paying dividends and shareholders love it. So in certain cases, when the business or the industry that they operate in don't really have any growth, right? There's no not a lot of innovation to be had. It makes sense for the business to pay out the extra cash because the management doesn't really know what to do with it. We're in certain businesses, for example, Seize Candy being one. We don't have a way to intelligently use all of the money that Seize generates within the Seize Candy Company. So if Seize were a standalone company, it would pay very large dividends. Not because it, you know, just had some dividend pol- paying policy, it would be simply because we wouldn't have a way of using, in this case, $30 million a year intelligently in expanding that business. Another example is if they are a mature company, they have stable cash flow and they don't know what to do with the cash. Dividend policy should really be determined by that criteria, also bearing in mind the possibilities of repurchase of stock too, but they should be determined by whether a dollar left in the business is worth more than to the shareholder than a dollar paid out. Now dividends might have some advantages for individual investors as well. Let's go over them. Dividends might be good for you if you are an income focused investor. If you have already retired or want a passive source of income that keeps on coming month after month, quarter after quarter, dividend stocks might be good for you. Another reason to own dividend stocks could be that you want to control your ownership. Once the company pays out the dividends, you essentially have the money and you can decide if you want to reinvest the money back into the company or you want to do something else. (laughs) 
The third reason that you might want to own companies that give out dividends would be through index fund. If you look at VOO, it gives out a dividend of 1.42%. So every $10,000 that you've invested in the index fund, you're getting back $142. To summarize, buying a stock only for its dividend is like buying a sundae just for the cherry on the top. Like any other investing strategy, you always have to do the due diligence, look at the business, and after that, look at the dividend to see if you're getting that cherry. If you want us to cover companies with a good dividend policy, please leave a comment below. Okay, bye. Okay, thank you.